Hey, what's happening, everybody? Mac the Duel is from the TCG Enterprise, where we talk about all your favorite card games. Have you guys finally got Commander up and running for Magic the Gathering? We're going to go ahead and talk about that today, show off a deck profile for it. It's an update on our Zenigos Gruel deck, which is going to be awesome. Um, I'm going to have, uh, obviously, going to be doing some how-to play videos um, for a lot of the TCGs, uh, just because get great content on the channel and try and boost up the algorithm. But anyways, let's go ahead and get on to it, you guys. We're going to start off with the list. All right, so to start things off, we're going to be going with our commander, uh, which is Xenagos, God of Revels. Has Indestructible, which can't be destroyed. Uh, the Devotion is less than uh, 7. It won't be a creature, but it'll still be an enchantment. Uh, target creature will gain haste and the XX until the end of the turn, which is the uh, power of the creature. So it helps out in a lot of tight spots, and Xenagos himself can get pretty big. And then we have one Rurik Thar, who was my previous commander at the time. Uh, attacks each turn if able, grab things out of the air, doesn't have to tap to attack or anything like that. And it can deal six damage to anybody who plays a non-creature spell, which is literally anything that's not a creature. Uh, for mana ramping, I have one Birds of Paradise. Because it's running red green into this deck, it can go for either color, which is great. Uh, one Land of War Elves. It's Land of War Elves. It's great for green. So it's a basic no two to, to drop into that guy uh same thing goes for an elvish mystic goes for green and i have a scavenging ooze allows you to go ahead and pay one green exile a target card from the graveyard and if it was a creature put a plus one onto it and gain one life helps out a little bit it's a little something uh zerta druid gets a green and you tap it everybody loses one life which is great one goblin arc uh ranic romancer uh each spell that's red or green costs one less to cast so why not we have one Fanatic Ronhas. Allows you to go ahead and get four mana if you activate a uh, tap ability for if you have creatures of power four or greater. One Spellbreaker Behemoth. Can't be countered. And creature spells with five or greater can't be countered, which is great. Elvish Piper is our easy drop for our big dudes. Pay the one green, tap it down, drop it down, easy. One Nylia, God of the Hunt. Has indestructible and devotion is uh, less than five. It isn't a creature. Other creatures in control will gain trample, which allow you to pass over the damage uh, to the opponent's life. And then target creature will gain plus two, plus two to the end of the turn, which is decent. Uh, one Oracle of Modaya lets you play an additional land for the turn. You reveal the top card of the library each time, um, but that's okay. You can play the top card of the library if it's a land. So it lets you get double land for the turn. So pretty awesome. Uh, one Toski, Bearer of Secrets, can't be countered, indestructible, attacks each turn, and whenever uh, it deals damage to a player, it lets you draw a card. So it gives it a little bit of draw power for the deck, why not? Uh, one Gore Claw, Terror of Quasima, uh, Assisma, uh, creature spells you control with power four or greater, cost two less to cast. This helps out a lot if we're not able to get into a, quite a few things. We can drop this guy down and then go ahead and start dropping some big dudes out for less mana. Um, and then it, when it attacks each creature you control with a power four or greater, it'll, we'll get a plus one and uh, trample till the end of the turn. That helps out a lot because we're running the big dude, so we want to go ahead and deal as much damage as we can possible, even if they are blocked. Uh, one Silverback Elder. This is one of my favorites, honestly. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one. Destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. Look at the top five cards of your library. You put any land, uh, put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped. Put the rest onto the bottom in a random order, or you gain four life. So, why not? And he's got good stats as well. Why not? Um, as far as our hastings, we got uh, Urbrask of the Hidden. Creatures you control will have haste. Creatures your opponent controls enter the battlefield tap. It gives you a little bit of an advantage. That way you don't have to get blocked. You can just start swinging right away. Uh, Beta Progress allows you to destroy all artifacts and enchantments when it enters the field. Gets a plus one counter on them uh, for each permanent that's destroyed this way. Balefire Dragon, honestly, one of my favorites. Uh, whenever it uh, deals combat damage to a player, it, it'll deal that much damage to each creature that that player controls. So if they have a whole army onto the field, and if I pumped it up with Xenagos, making it a 12-12, uh, or actually it should be a 12-11, uh, that it will... Uh, no, actually, it'll be 12-12. Um, it will deal 12 damage to everything that they control onto the field. Uh, as far as their creature goes. So that's going to be awesome. 
Um, and then we're going to have one Vorniclex. Let's you go ahead and tap your lands for double uh, for the mana that they would produce. And at the same time, if your uh, opponents tap for mana, they can't untap during the next untapped step. So it stalls up for your opponent, which is great. Then we have one World Spine Worm. This big boy could turn into a big old dude uh, with Xenagos. Uh, has trample. Whenever it dies, it'll bring out three green 5-5 five five uh, tokens that are worms with trample. And then if it's put into the graveyard from anywhere, you shuffle it into the owner's library. So it lets you go ahead and bring it back into the library. And then it, hopefully if you draw into it again, you could drop it again. Um, one old Nobum. Uh This one's really good. It deals combat damage to a player. You create that many treasure tokens. Treasure tokens allow you to go ahead and get your extra abilities going for uh, mana-based or for draw power. Anything else that you can think of for all these tokens into this kind of deck. Uh, one Kogla, the Titan Ape, is based off King Kong. Uh, it enters the battlefield and fights up the one target creature you don't control. When it attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. Return it to, uh, if you control a human, which unfortunately we do not, but that's fine. Um, in any case, it will gain indestructible until the end of the turn. But, I mean, like we really care. Uh, one Fine Horde Elves lets you go ahead and get uh, Green to the Mana Pool. You can play it as an Interrupt. Why not? Uh, then we have one Elder Gunnahoth. Vigilance, Reach, Trample, whenever it attacks or blocks, you can choose one. You can bring out a token. You can gain three life or draw a card. One over here, uh, God it allows you to go ahead and when it deals combat damage to a player, you reveal that many cards at the top of the library. You put a creature card or land among them and or land among them and put them onto the battlefield and to put the rest onto the bottom in any order. When it dies, return it onto the battlefield, tap and transformed. So when you transform this thing, you just basically just take it out, flip it over. And basically it'll turn into a land. And then it allows you to go ahead and uh, if you control 10 or more permanents, you add it as a sorcery. It basically just allows you to go ahead and transform it. Then I have uh, one Anraz, uh, An Ansrag, the Quick Mole. Uh, it, whenever it becomes blocked, untap each creature control and you get an additional combat phase. And everybody must be uh, blocked. Uh, everybody must combat block this guy, uh, but based off of the mana there. So that one's really good because then basically it becomes a big dude and you start ramming into a wall at that point. Uh, this one's really good. This one is uh, Zeppa Randro, uh, Hunger Dominus. It has reach. In the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until the end of the turn. Sacrifice two other creatures and put an indestructible counter on it. So why not? It's great. You can pump up everything that you've got and just swing hard at your opponent. We have one Delighted Halfling. Uh, it gives you the colorless mana. One mana of any color spent only... For red, uh, legendary creatures, and it can't be countered, which helps. We have a lot of legendary creatures in, you, in this deck, as you can tell. One Galta, Primal Hunger. Costs X less to cast with the, the total power of creatures you control. Has trouble. It's just a simple 12-12. I like the other Galta, though. I might mend, uh, mend up uh, putting it into this deck. Uh, that one allows you to drop any creatures that you want. So I'll probably think about putting that in. Who knows? Anyways, and then we have one um, Itali. Uh, Primal Conqueror, his trample, and it enters onto the battlefield. Each player exiles cards from the top of the library until the exile non land card. You may cast any number of spells from among them, exile this way without paying their cost. Then you can transform it, and when you transform this bad boy, he'll turn into a Phyrexian Dino, and it has trample and ex uh, indestructible, and it deals combat damage into the uh, way of poison counters. So basically, a point of uh, poison counters, you deal off for 15 poison. In this case, instead of 10, 15 poison, and you kill off your opponent right off the bat. And then we have one uh, Carlatch, Fury of Inverus. Uh, when it attacks, if it's the first combat of the turn, untap all of the game first strike until the end of the turn. And then you get an additional combat, so why not? And then we have one Earl Hog, the Raised Boar. Whenever it attacks, you can drop another creature onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. 
It's always good to have big dudes in your hand. Drop them down. One Summer Wild Sage allows you to go ahead and get three mana. So you use that towards your creature spells. As far as spells goes, now we're going into Farseek. It lets you to go ahead and search for planes. Island, Swamp, Mountain. It doesn't search for a forest, but that's fine. You basically will have things in here that account for both a mountain and a forest anyway, so it doesn't matter. One Blasphemous Act deals uh, 13 damage to everything for one less for each creature onto the battlefield. One Inch's Lore to get our forests in order. One Konama's Reach for our basics. One Primal Surge allows you to go ahead and do a really nasty combo. It's an end resort, obviously, once you play all of your spells. Uh, if you hit into a spell, you hit into a dead drop. But if you get a whole bunch of big permanents in your deck, and you want to just go ahead and drop a whole bunch of stuff, you exile the top card of the library. And if it's the permanent, you just drop it all down. You can get a whole bunch of dudes out and build a big old army of things that are so impressively strong and then you just swing for game and you, you know that's basically it uh harmonize gets our draw power draw three why not one rich card is expertise it lets you draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control the cast of cre uh cast a spell mana five or less from your hand without paying the cost which is great one sky truck claim for our forest we need that on our instance we have beast within allows you to drop uh permanent off on your opponent for spot removal and then they'll get a token, but I mean, it doesn't matter. At least you want to get it out for the good spots. One heroic intervention, uh, cre uh, permanency control will gain hex proof and indestructible until the end of the turn, which is great. Can't be targeted, can't be destroyed. Worldly tutor for our enchantments and also creatures. Or uh, creatures, actually, not enchantments. That's the other one I'm thinking of. Sorry. Uh, Return of the Wild Speaker, draw cards equal to the number of non human creatures you control. Non-human creatures you control will pl get plus three, plus three until the end of the turn, which is great. Smugglers, uh, surprise. Uh, Spree will allow you to go ahead and get multiple effects. So you can do off for the mill four cards. You can put two creature cards on the battlefield. Or creatures you control of power four or greater have hex proof and indestructible until the end of the turn. One hex proof, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> One uh, chaos warp allows you to go ahead and swap out for something. Uh, basically, you'll warp into one thing that's attacking you and then you can have them swap out for something else hopefully it's not too bad um it has to be at random off from the top card anyway so but it's still pretty good um and then uh we have one card of calling lets you search for a creature card with converted extra less mana onto the battlefield um and then shuffle the library where the convoke is basically you tap your creatures and then you can pay less mana for how much it's cost artifacts we have soul ring Gets you your two colorless mana. We have Grill Signet, which gets us red green. One Talisman of Impulse, it gets us red green, just one damage. One Arcane Signet gets you any color for your mana pool to your commander's ability. One Lightning Greaves gets you uh, Haste and Shroud. One Rona's Monument will have green things that will be one less to cast. And then Target Creature Spell will gain plus two, plus two, and triple to the end of the turn. On our enchantments, we have Rhythm of the Wild. Creature spells you control can't be countered, and the non-token creatures, they'll have right, so they'll either come out with haste or a plus one counter on it, which is great. Then we have Gruix Uprising. Enters out of the battlefield to control a creature card uh, with a power four or greater, draw one card. Creatures you control will have trample, and then whenever a creature of power four or greater enters onto the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Gets good draw power. Up to Beanstalk is awesome. Enters onto the battlefield. Whenever you cast a spell with power of five or more, you allow you to go ahead and draw one card, which is great. A lot of times we'll go ahead and do some heavy drops into this deck. Cynicism, things can't be targeted, which is great. And you can replenish out for your creatures to have them not get uh, killed off. Lurking Predators is one of my favorite enchantments in this deck. Uh, allows you to go ahead, if your opponent casts off their spell, you can look at the top card of the library. If it's a creature card, drop it down immediately uh rising of the day lets you have your creatures gain haste and legendaries will get plus one and zero until the uh actually on permanent actually they'll they'll, they'll stick with that uh boost which is great as far as our blame swalkers go we're going one domery of anarch of bolas which is awesome creatures will gain plus one and zero uh you add a red or green creature spells you cast this turn can't be countered Target creature you control will target uh, fight target creatures you don't control. 
So you basically pit fight all of them and have them attack each other. And then you have one Vivian um, advocate. Look at the top card of the uh, library at any time. You could uh, make cast creature spells for the top of the library. Get a beast token out. And whenever you cast your next creature this turn, you search the library for the creature card with the less converted mana cost and put it onto the battlefield shuffle your library after that, which is great. Then we have one Xenagos Reveler. Red Xenagos Reveler is awesome. It gives you any combination of red and green onto the battlefield. You could uh, play creature spells, which is the uh, number of creatures that you control. It lets you go ahead and get a satire token onto the battlefield. And you can exile the top cards of the library, put any number of creature cards, the land cards on among them onto the battlefield. Helps out. And then we have one Mexican Boo. Uh, when it enters under the battlefield at the beginning of the upkeep, you can create a Boo Legendary 1 1 hamster, which gives it this hamster. Has trample and haste. Sacrifice a creature. And it'll deal X damage to target where the creature uh, with X is the power, and if the battlefield. I'm sorry, if the sacrificed creature was the hamster, you draw X cards, which is great. You can pump this thing up and just make it really, really nasty. Um, and then as far as our lands go, we're going with Cinder Glade for Break Green. Command Tower, Copper Lane Gorge. Uh, Craig, uh, Craig Grown Pathway, which basically you'll f uh, flip over if you wish. And you can change it over to Timber Grown Pathway. Or tip ground uh, pathway. You can do whatever one that you want, honestly. But I prefer to go with the green, uh, with the red side. Why not? Uh, one dryad arbor is a creature, but it's also a land. Um, Firelit thicket gets you for your uh, double red, or double green, or your red green. One Corposium forest, one Kessic wolf run. Relay quarry tower gives you no maximum hand size, which is great. One rock fail veil. Uh, Rumbo and Crag for Red Green. Scarred Rage Pits lets you go ahead and get Trample until the end of the turn and plus one on the target creature. Spire Garden. Stomping Ground. Commercial District. Wooded Foothills is your fetch. lets you go ahead and search for any force card. Raging Ravine. It'll turn into a dude with a 3-3 Red Green Elemental and it'll put a plus one counter onto it. We got uh, Re uh, Restless Ridgeline. It will become a 3-4 dinosaur until the end of the turn. And plus 2 is 0 when it attacks. But, you know, in due time, I mean, you basically don't really care too much into that. Because you don't really want to lose your lands if they get killed off. Uh, one Shelter to Thicket. One Lair of the Hydra. If you control two or other lands, it'll enter in tapped. Um, and Lair of the Hydra becomes a XX Green Hydra token onto the land and X can't be zero, but that's okay. Turn into a dude. Muscle Bridge is great. It powers up itself with uh, Primal Search, so you can drop down Primal Search for free if you have things that'll get, uh, have a combined total of power of ten, and then it automatically just plays it for free. Once you do the hideaway cost, it basically puts the land uh, or puts the card underneath the land. Uh, one game trail, and then of course we're going to be going with our fancy. Uh, stained glass forest or shattered glass forest. Stained glass. Stained glass forest. We're going with all of those, and then we're going to be going with our stained glass mountains at the same time. And so that's it for the deck, you guys. Uh, if you guys want to see some commander matches, I'll definitely be able to play off of those, um, have those in recorded sessions. So, but for anything else, you guys, thank you for your support. Go ahead and like this video and also subscribe. Hit the post notification bell so you don't miss a beat. Stay tuned for more Commander decks and other things under the channel for that matter. I'll catch you all in the next time. Happy gaming.